I want to thank Ryan Arnold. He's the Senior Database Administrator from THQ. Uh, thank you for coming today and presenting on how THQ uses DevTest and DevTrack. We are so excited to have you here, as I know all of our attendees and um, customers are as well. Ryan, I'm going to turn this over to you. And before I do that, if anyone has any questions today, if you look in the right-hand corner, You'll see a question option. Feel free to type in those questions. And toward the end of the uh, webinar today, we will be answering those questions as best we can. We will also make this webinar is being recorded today, and we'll make this available to all attendees next week. And we'll send you a link with this webinar. So I please sit back, and I hope you enjoy. And Ryan, take it away. Thank you. Well, thanks, Renee. And uh, thanks, everyone, for attending today's uh, webinar. I'm very excited to have the opportunity to discuss um, not only my process uh, in terms of uh, our database and how we use DevTrack and DevTest, but to get a chance to talk to all of you today and share some of my experiences. So uh, we'll start from the beginning. We'll just give you guys a quick overview of what I'm going to discuss today. So essentially, uh, about Five years ago, uh, THQ started um, looking for a new issue tracking solution, and we had a number of different things, a number of different considerations that we needed to take into account while we were looking for an issue tracking solution. And some of these were things like it needed to be able to accommodate workloads of multiple groups working out of the database simultaneously. Uh, it needed to be able to provide issue tracking that would be available to both external and internal users and would it allow people to easily pull metrics out and get an overview of what the current state of the game or the, you know, what the testing process was at that time. And it also had to be available to uh, users you know, worldwide. We have a, a, a huge operation with lots of different diverse groups, large and small, and they all needed to be able to access database and interact with it in uh, whatever way they needed to, you know, using their own unique workflows. So we ended up, after looking at a bunch of different products that are available, we ended up choosing uh, DevTrack and DevSuite. And like I say here in the presentation, we ended up getting a tool that allowed us to, you know, meet all these needs and, and also kind of go beyond that. And I'm going to discuss some of the ways uh, that we use DevTrack here today. First of all, a little background on my company. Uh, I work for a company named THQ, and we are a um, publisher of video games. Essentially, we publish for every console. We publish for uh, mobile devices. Uh, we do uh, Facebook and sort of social games, uh, and, and we've been essentially doing that for the past 20 years. Um, and so we needed to have a solution that would allow us to test all these different types of products um, and be able to keep them in one place so that our centralized publisher QA uh, can keep track of all the different standardization uh, testing that we needed to do and also the functional testing that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about the different types of users who are accessing DevTrack, um, our implementation of DevTrack on a day-to-day -day basis. So these are our internal studios. Uh, currently, THQ has five internal development studios, and all of them use DevTrack to varying degrees. Some use De uh, other issue tracking solutions internally, but when they come online with corporate QA and they um, start working with us to get the games ready to go to first parties for submission and things like that, they come onto DevTrack and uh, we were, we're able to accommodate both their workflows and our workflows at the same time. This is just an example of some of the titles that, uh, have, that uh, we've used DevTrack for the testing of. Um, as you can see, it's a pretty diverse lineup. We, we do kids games, we do uh, sports games, and then we do sort of like more core games, uh, you know, games like Homefront and Saints Row the Third. Um, but, but essentially, you know, all of these different games will have really different development teams that are working on them and people that have different needs. And so uh, we really needed a tool that would allow us to be able to test a wide range of games such as this. 
uh, without having to have a unique tool developed every single time that we started a testing process. We also have a large group of external developers who access our database from all over the world. We have um, outsourced testing in India. We, uh, we've worked with groups in, um, in Asia on um, some of our kind of MMO properties. We had a, a Chinese version of Company of Heroes that we worked with uh, some Chinese uh, development teams on. Uh, we have groups in Australia and the Pacific Rim. Um, so essentially, we have people worldwide accessing the database, you know, 24 hours a day. So I kind of break that down in this next slide here. So when I'm talking about what we needed as a company, what we needed as an issue tracking solution, these are sort of the primary goals. These are kind of my uh, the, the things to to which I aspire every day. You know, I need to make sure that the system is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to people worldwide. Um, I also need to be able to ensure that data, the data is secure, and that you know the integrity of the data, that the data can be assured, so that we're not going to be losing anything, and stuff that's entered into the database can be easily, safely accessible to all of our different groups that are accessing DevTrack. Another thing I need uh, with all of our different groups that we have is a system that can easily and quickly adapt to various different groups working within a project. So to give you guys an idea, sometimes we have projects where we'll have an internal studio, an internal development studio entering bugs. At the same time, there might be an external studio who's working on a specific element of the game, such as, let's say, multiplayer. We may also have, simultaneously, one of our localization vendors who's looking at the game for the you know, specifically for updating language bugs and things like that. And at the same time, we have our internal test teams that are running, you know, standardization tests and functionality tests against the database. And every one of these groups can have wildly different ways in which they need to use the database. They have different uh, data sets that they need to be tracking. And all of these different um, elements need to be fused together in one project so that we can have everybody accessing and pulling data from the same place without having to have multiple logins or multiple projects going simultaneously. Uh, and then the final aspect of that is that, especially for publisher QA, uh, people really need to have the ability to take this data that we're tracking and pull it out and generate reports from it in a way that's going to be useful to project managers as well as team leads so that they can sort of focus on the areas that are of interest to them or maybe that uh, need the most attention based on the state of the game that we're being tested. So that's kind of an overview of what I'm looking for in terms of like the database in general. And now I'm going to talk a little bit more specifically about how we've used some of the different um, aspects of DevTrack and DevTest um, in, in terms of our day-to-day -day testing. So we'll start with the, when I, oh. oh yeah, okay, well so we'll do a little more number crunching I guess here. I got one slide ahead of myself. So basically this is the way that we have our server currently implemented. Uh, we have DevTrack Dev and DevTest running on a six server implementation. We have a unique servers uh, for our web clients so that we can do web load balancing. We have two application servers that do sort of a passive active failover in case um, we need to do, we need to you know, have one app go down for, for a period of time. We also have separate uh, servers that house our reporting feature so that we can offload some of the reporting so that uh, it's not going to be taking any bandwidth away from people that are just using the database online. Uh, and then um, the last thing that we have is a separate document server, which basically is just used to house attachments for the bugs. And then all these services are distributed over these different uh, servers, and they communicate with each other and make one sort of whole cohesive um, cluster. So we have about 6,500 active users in the database. Um, they don't necessarily all connect simultaneously. But uh, th those are people that could potentially be getting online uh, at one point or another. Um, and because of DevTrack's web um, client, these people are able to access the database from their homes, from anywhere that they have, you know, like an internet connection, basically. And so it makes uh, it makes our database a lot more accessible than certain other um, issue tracking tools out there 
which require like a VPN login or, or you know, some kind of a Windows client in order to access it securely. Um, and that's really good because, you know, most of our users are not in the continental United States. Most of the people that are logging in are, you know, worldwide. And then, as you can see there, are, uh, at any given time, I have around 700 active DevTrack projects that are going on simultaneously, be that, you know, projects with, you know, two or three hundred people or a small sort of like, you know, mobile game with four or five people accessing the database. And so how do we use DevTrack to best kind of accommodate this, what is, what is obviously a very large group of people that are all accessing DevTrack simultaneously? Well, one of the key features that we use in DevTrack is a feature called issue type. And issue type allows us to create um, issue tracking projects that have multiple workflows, meaning that if you have groups of people that, let's say that a lot of times development teams, for example, like to have extremely streamlined workflows. Like they, they're only interested in submitting bugs and then you know fixing them and closing them. They're not really interested in in any workflows that might track other aspects of the life cycle of a bug. Whereas our publisher QA, we have a really complicated um, workflow. Well, I won't call it complicated. I'll call it you know, sort of um, refined, specific to our uses. So I'll show you that here. So here's an example of like the workflow that we use day to day within DevTrack. And as you can see, it is, uh, you know, there's a lot of different stages. There's a lot of different transitions. And not every development team wants to come in and have to manage all these transitions and stages. So for example, here's, here's one development team workflow that we used on one project. And as you can see, it's a lot simpler. Um, so in a lot of other issue tracking systems, you, you, you would have to create sort of separate environments for these two teams to be working on the same project within. But using issue type within DevTrack, we're able to create completely customized, unique workflows that teams can use, you know, the, so that they can work within DevTrack in a way that works for them, but they can be working side by side with other groups and who are using different workflows, which allows everyone, you know, to track the, the types of the bugs in the way that they need to um, without having to create a bunch of, you know, kind of what some people would view as like excessive transitions or stages or something like that. And this has worked out great. Um, we, we, um, we've used this on, on I would say, on average, each DevTrack project that we have has at least three separate, unique workflows working within the same project. And from the user's point of view, they don't need to worry about any of this stuff. They just log in, they move the bugs through the way, through the, the workflow in a way that makes sense to them, um, but without having to worry about like the fact that the, maybe the QA team is seeing a whole different set of stages and transitions. And this really allows us to, uh, for for publisher QA to be able to pull the metrics out of the database we need without having to inconvenience, um, you know, other people who might be tracking issues and don't need to, um, you know, kind of track metrics in exactly the same way. And uh, without issue type, we wouldn't be able to do that. And so that's a, for us, that's an extremely key feature. And obviously, uh, another aspect that DevTrack really shines in, uh, and I think outshines a lot of the other options out there, is the reporting features. Uh, DevTrack has an extremely robust reporting feature, and for people in publisher QA, for whom metrics and reporting and you know it's daily reports, weekly reports, that kind of stuff, it's, it's kind of the lifeblood of you know kind of QA tech leads. Like it seems to be what they're doing, you know. 50% of their day. And so they need to have a tool that not only can they generate exactly the kind of reports that they need, but they need to be, re, you know, they need to be consumable by other groups. And so DevTrack makes that really easy. They have a number of different ways you can generate reports. Um, not only do they have an extremely wide variety of report types and ways to um, kind of customize a report, but they also have a, lot, a variety of ways to distribute the report. Um, using the web client, you can actually create web reports that are available to people online. You can even make them available to people without a login, although we, we don't use that feature for security reasons, but potentially you could be creating, you know, bug web reports that somebody could see without even needing to have access to DevTrack. Um, and then obviously you can also export these reports into a number of different formats. Um, 
such as like you know Excel or or um, you know text or whatever 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 format you might need to get it into to you know view in some other way you just you know, there's definitely a way to do that with DevTrack. Like, especially the Windows client is an extremely robust um, export feature. But both the web and the Windows client really allow users a, a, a very wide um, range of report types. So some other key features of DevTrack um, that we use on a day-to-day -day basis that we have found to be extremely useful and make the product compelling to us. Uh, obviously, email notifications is really key. Uh, we use DevTrack not, not only for issue tracking, but for a number of other um, sort of related uh, Q&A processes, one of which is our mastering lab uh, cube, like sort of request system that we have. And the kind of automated email system is, is really handy for, for situations like that where you, you can really define like really unique and specific criteria and you can also you know kind of predefine your email uh, the body of your email in such a way so that you can you can have a real granular ability to notify people of real specific events within the database uh, and they don't necessarily have to be logged into the system all the time in order to see that. Uh, another key feature that we like is um, DevTrack's auto rooting feature, which is uh, which is used by one of our studios uh, in particular. They really love it because uh, it essentially allows the system to kind of take some of the hassle of uh, hand, kind of assigning bugs to specific users, and we can use criteria within the bug to auto route a bug to a specific uh, developer who's going to address it um, using the auto routing function. And for us, it's really uh, kind of uh, then the next feature is, is interproject linking and cloning, which uh, we've used a lot for. We have a lot of projects that we do here, um, like let's say large kind of Pixar movie games where you're working on projects that have like seven or eight platforms simultaneously. And a lot of times those are actually being developed by totally different developers. But many times the bugs that are occurring are actually the same from, from you know, from project to project and, and um, platform to platform. And so we've had a real... Uh, really wrestled with how best to handle uh, the kind of report issues that occur on multiple platforms simultaneously. And uh, DevTrack allows you to create links between bugs, even if they aren't in the same DevTrack project, so that you can quickly kind of switch between bugs in different projects and um, kind of keep tabs on a particular bug that might exist between multiple different, oh, hold on, somebody's moving my, uh, I don't know who's doing that, but it's not me. Uh, um, between different platforms simultaneously. Another aspect of DevTrack that we use a lot is subprojects, which sounds really simple, but it's, it's extremely handy for, uh, again, kind of creating like a filtering system uh, that allows us to have bugs being tested by multiple different groups within the same project, uh, because you can create subprojects based on SKU, or you can even create them based on like, you know, um, sprints or something like that so that you can quickly kind of sort bugs and it helps people kind of manage these kind of huge bug databases. Uh, then some of the other things, uh, you know, I'll kind of go into is like, like I guess the point of the last, you know, kind of three things there is that DevTrack is just extremely customizable. Like a lot of times the way that I describe it is like people will come to me and they'll ask me for real specific functionality and, and I, and because DevTrack is so uniquely customizable, I can, I can kind of model the database to the way that they want to work, work with it. So sometimes they may, for example, with the user-definable fields and parent-child relations, like sometimes they may want to be able to not only have the ability to create fields, but they have those fields only appear um, relative to specific project or specific platform. <laughs> so like they don't want to enter a bunch of fields that are specific to like standardization testing, um, you know, for Nintendo first party, and then have the Xbox guys have to kind of sift through these, you know, big Nintendo fields. So, uh, you know, I can kind of use the customizability of DevTrack to give the users the functionality that they're looking for in the database, and it, it's really great. And field level access control is, is kind of another aspect of it. Like a lot of times I'm working on projects where uh, different user groups want to have kind of um, extremely granular control over who can see what when and who can control what when. And because DevTrack is so customizable, I'm able to set up projects that have 
extremely diverse uh, you know, user access so that some groups of people can see certain things and some people can't and some people can edit them at certain points of the workflow. And without those controls, I mean, half of the stuff that we do in the database wouldn't be possible. And it's, it's a real, uh, extremely unique and key feature uh, within DevTrack. And also, uh, the last one I put on there, Unicode support is important uh, for us because we uh, have a lot of developers that uh, are speak Japanese and speak Chinese and Korean, and um, they are obviously working out of the database, and they're using their native language. And so uh, the Unicode support has really helped us uh, support those groups um, who, who do not want to be using Roman characters within the database, and that's, and that's great. And because DevTrack is so uh, uniquely customizable, I'm able to use it for, for some tasks that are not, not necessarily issue tracking tasks. And here's a few examples of those. So for example, we, have, uh, we use DevTrack to track um, assets that are submitted to the legal department for approval. And it's essentially just a big database of uh, you know, different specific you know, pictures or names or whatever, and their status in terms of whether or not they've been approved for use in a game by the legal department. Now, previously, this was something that was all tracked in Excel and was kind of these big, dense documents that were hard to look through. But putting them into DevTrack has really allowed these users to quickly sort of get, get their, wrap their head around the current state of the game in terms of its process towards you know, legal approval. And they can see different assets that have you know, kind of gone back and forth multiple times to their workflow. And it's really allowed them, I think, to more quickly process and understand the state of the game in terms of like the legal asset. And I also talked a little bit about Mastering Lab already, but we use uh, DevTrack as a burn request system, which is good because it allows them to create reports um, that can track media usage. Uh, the Creative Department Licensor Approvals is similar to the Legal Department Asset Approval. It's just sort of a, you know, a repository for uh, specific items within the game that need to be approved by um, the license holder for a particular game. And then finally, uh, the first party teams here, we call them CQA, uh, have archives that they've created within DevTrack, which basically store um, all of the uh, reports that we've gotten back from first party teams uh, so that they can kind of use that as a resource to point to people that may have questions about bugs within the database. Like if, for example, somebody marked something as a standard violation and a project manager came back and sort of wondered whether or not that was true, uh, the CQA teams can use this project to link um, a previous report where we got you know, a fail for something specific. And it, it's really helped us with our communication you know, of, of why you know, we believe certain things are standard violations. That, you know, it gives them the ability to kind of track that in a way that's extremely handy. Another aspect of DevTrack is uh, the Link Plus API, which is a feature that, that we just uh, we've kind of only been beta testing it at this point, but we're extremely excited about its use because because we have so many different groups that come to us and either want to integrate their testing tools with DevTrack, or they in some cases we have people that want to be able to port bugs into DevTrack from their pre-existing issue tracking system. A DevTrack does have an import feature, uh, but it's it's pretty basic. It's similar to importing uh, stuff into Microsoft Access. And so we've been working on tools that will allow us to kind of have an active link between um, an external or internal studio's um, kind of dev test database and our publisher side test database. Um, and so some of the things that we've been kind of working on um, are um, project that we have here called ViewMaster, which is an internal tool that we've been working on. Uh, we also have different project managers who, they all kind of have their own unique way of wanting to track data and, and sort of keep an eye on a game. And so the API has been really handy because we can just sort of give it to them. And it's, it's like we're giving them access to the SQL table, so they can kind of, without actually giving them access to the SQL table, so they can just kind of pull that raw data out of the API and then essentially kind of format it in whatever way they want to. And that's helped in areas where, for whatever reason, the report features of DevTrack aren't kind of, they're not granular enough or they're not um, dividing the data up in a, in a way that they want to. 
And so then we have a couple other things I listed on here, like hand track and uh, dev test uh, drill down reports, which are other projects that we're using uh, the API modules for. So that's kind of my spiel on dev track, and I'll, I'll go into a little bit about how we use dev test, which is um, Tech Excel's uh, test tracking, um, I guess, module, uh, which which we have linked to DevTrack, and it's really great. In, in the way that DevTrack allows issue tracking to be, you know, kind of formatted in a way that's easily reportable and accessible by a large number of people, DevTest allows us to take our test cycles and automate, or not automate them, but um, computerize them in a way that makes um, the data that we're tracking, you know, extremely accessible to managers and leads, which makes their test planning far more effective. So, for example, um, our first party teams use Dev Test a lot, and some of the things that they've used it for that they that they appreciate about it is that it's allowed them to digitize their requirement checklist. So they used to do everything on paper. They basically have the checklist that the first party groups would, you know, kind of do the TRCs or TCR reports from Sony and Microsoft, and they would just kind of go down them. And now, with DevTest, they can digitize that, and they can use, you know, they can basically run those checklists and then track the data from that so they can kind of keep an eye on the game in terms of, you know, its readiness for submission. And, and they can also see areas in the game where maybe there's standards problems or things they need to focus on. And like I said next, it allows the specialists to sort of focus testing on where it needs it the most, whereas in, when you're doing everything on Excel or you're kind of running the same test cycles over and over again, sometimes it's hard to get a feel for maybe what areas of a game might need more specific attention from a test team. And using dev test really allows the standards team to focus on um, problem areas of the game and, and you know, hopefully um, that attention will make those areas better. And so, like, I just put some examples of, like, you know, the kinds of submission risks that they can search for specifically. is basically, like, you know, they can search by area of game. They can use specific first-party requirements that they're looking for. And then it's set metrics, metrics, and more metrics, which everyone in publisher QA loves to track. So that's kind of how TQA uses it. But it's also used by our functional team. And um, the thing that the functional team seem to really enjoy about it is that it really gives the team leads the ability to plan testing based on data rather than instinct. And by that I mean that when they run these test cycles, they get to a point where they can really go back and look at the metrics of the test cycles and they can really see like, okay, well here's an area of a game that basically because you know we couldn't access it, we've really only given attention to 20% of the time that we've tested. So we should really focus on that. And it'll really allow us then to create test plans with like finite information about you know, what is going on with their testing and what areas that they may need to focus a little bit more. And, uh, and like I said, test case results are digital, which allows, you know, them to create plans and reports off of those far more easily than they would if everything was kind of a paper or something like that. And then finally, um, the feature within dev test called environment variables allows um, test leads to quickly build test plans across multiple platforms and localizations, meaning that a lot of times if you're creating a test matrix and you have, let's say, four platforms and five languages, you can get into these massive, sort of unwieldy test matrices that a lot of times are done in Excel. And using environment variables in dev test sort of allows you to, to um, automate the process in which you pull out certain chunks of that matrix and then you can go back and see you know which areas of the matrix you've already tested and which areas you haven't and you know it allows for a more complete testing of a test matrix than perhaps you would get if you were just using like a huge Excel checkbox document or something along those lines. We also have a new group within functional QA that is specifically focusing on multiplayer testing. And they use, they've been using dev test a lot. And something that they like about it is that it's, it's very easy for them to quickly take their kind of standardized multiplayer testing suite and apply it to different games, kind of using like cut and paste essentially. And it makes setting up uh, for test cycles and things far easier. And, and it also allows standardization of testing to be 
a lot more complete, and they can they can kind of more easily compare um, the state of the game against other games and things like that. And it's really allowed for the standardization of multiplayer testing, which uh, has led to less problems with um, our, our games that have multiplayer features. Uh, then, as I say here, it allows them to easily coordinate huge groups of multiplayer testers and who are testing out of large test matrices. They can assign certain uh, chunks of a test matrix out to a specific individual, and then they can kind of track that specific individual's progress through that test matrix, and it, it makes um, planning these kind of massive multiplayer testing um, suites a lot easier to manage. And then finally, and I think this is true for not just multiplayer testing, but for everyone that uses dev tests, it really gives the test leads the ability to have sort of a, a build by build kind of state of the game idea about you know what's going on with the project and, and you know what's the state of testing on it and things like that. It's come in really handy. But dev test and dev track are not the only two um, uh, modules that are part of Dev Suite that Tech Excel makes, and these are some of our ideas about, you know, kind of the future of Publisher QA and some of the other aspects that we might start using other than Dev Track and Dev Test. So T I work uh, specifically. I work out of the office here at THQ Montreal, and um, we have a development team here actually. And currently, we're we're kind of discussing um, them starting to use uh, Dev Spec and Dev Plan. Uh, both of which are um, parts of Dev Suite that are kind of more developer focused in, in terms of the sort of data that they track, and they're kind of you know so maybe more for project managers or people that are thinking about a game uh, earlier in its development cycle than when Publisher QA would come onto it. But because it integrates so well with Dev Track and Dev Test, um, there's a lot of interest in um, you know kind of bringing all those elements together so that we can kind of have a soup to nuts development cycle where you know everybody's kind of working out of the same data set the entire time. Additionally, we have a couple of studios that uh, you know, use agile development and uh, they are um, interested in kind of transitioning to agile studio um, from you know kind of dev track because they're interested in incorporating more um, agile testing and ag you know into their uh, the way that they're developing their games. And so um, we're going to, we're probably going to be doing an upgrade here and I think that we're going to start reevaluating some of the workflows that we use and some of the um, some of the dev track feature sets that we use to kind of more uh, adequately accommodate these groups that are using Agile development. And then uh, I think it was announced at the uh, users conference uh, which I unfortunately had to leave early, so maybe it wasn't. But uh, I think that it was announced that uh, DevTrack is going to have uh, eventually have sort of a distributed server implementation. And for us, this is something that we're really excited about. Um, I think a lot of the resistance that we get from internal development teams to switching to DevTrack earlier in the development process is essentially the fact that they have to connect to our um, data center, which is in Phoenix. And for groups like us here in Montreal or up in Vancouver or you know in Champaign, um, that can kind of lead to sort of slow connectivity and some problems that wouldn't exist if DevTrack was running off a server in the same office. And so we're really excited about the idea that we might be able to one day run multiple um, DevTrack servers at each of our different studios that would then be able to communicate with the you know the primary testing facility in Phoenix. And without having some of the connectivity issues that uh, that we sometimes get at this point, although I should point out that uh, for people that use the the web client, you know, most most often the, the connectivity is pretty, is pretty good. Uh, and this is just an example of a uh, of a tool that we were developing here, and you know, using the API, but uh, we're really making a push here to start uh, kind of an internal, uh, or not internal, but like a publisher QA tools group. And this group is going to be working really closely with the database. And I'm excited to start getting these guys developing tools that will integrate with DevTrack uh, using the Link Plus API that DevTrack has, and as well as the um, the API for DevTest, which I think is called TestLink. 
Uh, I don't have that installed yet, but um, eventually we will because uh, we have leads here that are really interested in creating um, creating reports using it. The last element of the future is that uh, we have a big, huge project coming up here in Publisher QA, which is the Warhammer 40K MMO, and it's going to be the largest testing project that anybody here has ever taken part of. And an aspect of that is going to be uh, like a public beta, most likely, or at least if not a public beta, then kind of a, a beta test that's open to people outside of Publisher QA. And I've been getting a lot of questions about how we're going to handle the testing for that, and one potential solution would be the use of like a DevTrack beta customer portal, which would allow members of maybe not necessarily the public, but people that were give granted sort of beta access, the ability to submit bugs into our bug database or a bug database that was linked to our production database, um, uh, you, you know, without actually having to give them full access rights to DevTrack. Kind of similar, I, I would say, to the way that the Tech Excel support site works. Um, and uh, so that's something that we haven't really implemented yet, but in looking at the future, I see that as, as being something that we would probably take advantage of or were it available, um, because that's going to be a very huge project and um, going to be larger than anything we've worked on. Not about wraps it up for me, but I am more than happy to take questions from anybody. Um, thank you very much for your time, and uh, I. I highly recommend you taking a look at uh, dev track or dev test for your uh, for your test tracking needs. Thanks, Ryan. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Oh yeah. Sorry about the the initial uh, confusion on the audio at the, the beginning. Um, yeah. So we have a few questions for you to answer. And okay. um, but before we do that, um, I did want to mention you were mentioning the multi site and yes. The multi-site is available in January, and that will allow um, users to have replicated projects that are on multiple servers. Um, you know, and we'll probably have a webinar in uh, either December or January to cover that. But um, one of the questions that came up was: um, Was there any resistance to the initial um, implementation of the issue tracking? So uh, I know that. From hearing from other customers, sometimes it's hard to just get people in the mindset to use those to begin with. Well, um, I was not the database administrator at the time that we implemented, but I heard horror stories. Um, it, there was definitely a lot of resistance to um, the adoption of, of a new, I, I wouldn't say so much dev track as much as a new issue tracking system. At the time, we had an in-house issue tracking system uh, that you know, people just kind of want to avoid change wherever possible. And although it worked for what we were using it for, it didn't really allow for the scalability and worldwide availability that we needed. And so when we initially, actually it was kind of one of the reasons that we chose DevTrack was because it, it's the fact that it was so customizable allowed us to um, implement it in a way that was actually similar to the way that the old the, uh, database worked, so it, it actually helped with that transitional period. And since then, we've moved away from a lot of those workflows that we had. But um, yeah, there was a lot of initial resistance, which I think is is more down to um, just kind of people's inherent uh, desire to not have everything change on them, you know, and have to learn a whole new system. Um, uh, but I imagine you probably would also get that on the, the test case management side too. Um, so another question that came up related to something you said about the task requests for the mastering lab. Um, yeah. Is that something that, it, was it built for external or internal teams? Is, was it a custom oh, thing it, built or just a F-Track workflow you created? Uh, it's, it's internal only. Uh, it's not available to, uh, it, it, essentially we had a system in the old database uh, which handled uh, the sort of the dev, the, the mastering lab request queue, which is basically like people at a corporate or at publisher QA, you know, will request certain, you know, 20 builds of a specific game for testing that day. And then that stuff will all be, you know, at the time was all displayed in, um, 
you know, you could kind of access the queue and look at where you were in the queue, and it would inform you when you when it was something was ready for pickup, and so on and so forth. And so essentially, I just modeled something similar with DevTrack using uh, DevTrack's web report. So we created sort of a, a, a public web report that people could view their uh, burn request, and uh, you know, using email notifications to you know kind of let them know when their burns were done, and uh, it just you know, essentially, I just kind of remodeled what already existed in the old uh, bug database. Okay. Um, another question is more just kind of about your implementation. Um, sure. Do you have a, a centralized team that manages um, your dev track and dev test instances, or is it done on a you know a studio by studio basis? How how are you administering it? Well, we have uh, dev track is is installed on a server cluster that's in our data center, the corporate data center. Uh, so it's not, there isn't anyone in any of our external studios or internal studios that um, are really involved in managing it at all. And in fact, I really, uh, myself and uh, Louis Aravalo, my other database administrator, are, are really the only people that are administering DevTrack from a day, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, now some of the hardware um, administration uh, we do actually have like you know like a systems admin and then we have a SQL database administrator that runs the SQL database that DevTrack connects to but that database also houses like a bunch of other SQL based you know databases as well um, so I know some places do use kind of a distributed administration um, model which would work but uh, we have everything centralized within publisher QA and essentially, myself and the other database admin are the only two people that are managing dev track and dev test on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. Um, and also along the, the same line of question with the implementation is, is what was the time frame for implementing the solution over the, you know, the, the large number of users and projects? Well, it's grown with time, obviously, but... Um, you know, it's, it's very easy to get DevTrack up and running uh, in terms of like, you know, the initial installation and getting the, you know, I would say that takes about maybe four or five hours. Uh, but, then, but then growing it is, is uh, it, it kind of depends on the size of your team, I would say. Like uh, on, on average, if I was going to create a new project and add, let's say, 100 members to it, uh, that would probably take me about an hour to an hour and a half. Um, the longest part of that is just creating new DevTrack um, users, actually, because creating new projects in DevTrack is extremely easy uh, if you use a template, because you can just kind of use a template and then clone the template, and that takes about like two minutes. And so if you start from a template, creating new projects in DevTrack is like super easy. Um, but then, I guess, so I guess, it depends on the size of your team and the amount of customization that you're going to need on a project-by-project -project basis and uh, the size of your overall user base. Like, we didn't just instantly get to the amount of users that we have now. Uh, we probably started with about four or 500, and we add, let's say, maybe, you know, 50 to 100 a month, you know, over the course of the last five years, I'd say. Okay. Um. We have time for a couple more questions. Uh, one more question about, well, actually, a question about um, some of the metrics. Uh, do you have any screenshots or anything of some of the how you track status of, of testing projects and whether you're complete? That might be something, maybe if you had something that you were willing to share, we could send out afterwards. Um, so is that like, a, do you think that's dead test? Specifically, or dev? Track? Yeah, they were looking for dev tests specifically. Uh, yeah, I I, uh, I could probably I could put an example up of you know kind of a a, a status report or a weekly report or something like that. I I'd probably have to run it by the test team here and find one that people thought was. Um, okay. We had another. We had a question about um, the use of the APIs and what your development environment is like um, related to those? Well, that is a good question. Uh, currently, uh, we're primarily developing tools for it with 
Python. I don't know if that's I don't know if that's what they're asking specifically. Um, but, think, but yeah, we're we're primarily using Python. But the the API itself is is fairly basic. It's it's essentially um, it's, it's just a URL that gives you direct access to uh, most of the same function calls you'd get if you were using the web client. So basically, you can create a tool that can pull a specific data out of out of DevTrack or display bugs in, in, in a way that you you know might need to. Uh, so most likely, you could use whatever tools you were you know most comfortable with. Uh, but but for the most part, I think at this point we've been the tools that we've been developing have we've been using Python to develop. Okay, and, and then um, kind of like a test server that runs it and. Sort of test against the database that way. Okay. Uh, one question for me is: Is this being recorded, and so will there be a replay? Yes, there will. Um, we should have that up sometime next week, um, and it'll be on our website. And we'll also send a follow up to uh, the attendees. And then the um, last question for you, Ryan, is: How are you managing your resources within DevTrack? In terms of workload and such, or is that something that you you do manage in in DevTrack? So, like resource load and such. That no, that's a good question. That, that's a question that I get asked a lot, and I think it's. Uh, I hope that it's something that is going to be uh, a little more manageable once we get some of the more agile specific features with a later version of DevTrack. Uh, because right now, uh, in terms of like the resources of the development team and what their current workload is, uh, it's not necessarily as granular as agile development. Because a lot of times people want like sort of like a down to the hour kind of um, status report on how long somebody's been working on something and, and how much longer they have to go on it so that they can then kind of make sort of drill down reports based on that and they can kind of look at their workload. And you can do that in DevTrack right now, but it takes a little bit of creative report generation. And um, it would probably be easier if people use, kind of integrate it and use DevPlan with that as well. So I guess my answer is we're not necessarily using DevTrack um, to, uh, we're not necessarily using it to, to manage resources from the standpoint of development. Um, I think I would say that we do use it to manage resources from the standpoint of regression, you know, and kind of like which testers are working on what aspects and, and what's the turnaround level of, you know, bugs per tester hour and all that kind of stuff. Like those metrics definitely get pulled out. Um, but I think there are more features that we could uh, take advantage of from a development standpoint. Okay. Um, oh. And, and actually, one quick and easy question that, that I think I already know the answer to. But um, do you use the Windows client or the web client? Uh, primarily, our teams use the uh, use the web client because we find it to be a lot faster in most cases for people like in India or places like that. Um, internally, for people that are on the corporate network, uh, people do use the Windows client because it has kind of like drag and drop, right click sort of certain functions that the, uh, the, the version of DevTrack that we're on do not currently have. Um, so, And I'd love to chime in there to say that the, the, the new version of the newest versions of DevTrack and DevTest do have that too, so the right mouse click and such. So uh, hopefully we'll uh, get you guys on that version. And Which is radical. Yeah, we're, we're probably going to do an upgrade here within the next couple of weeks. So we'll, yeah. you know, we'll have a Okay. Well, Thank you so much, uh, Ryan, uh, for the webinar today. I thought it was uh, really informative and helpful, and hopefully everyone else did too. Um, we will have a recording of this webinar up soon, um, and we'll have another webinar coming up in uh, January. Um, so keep keep your eyes up open and uh, take a look for that. But thank.